Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make uh, brightness and contrast adjustments in your Pulsar thermal scope. Actually, it would apply probably to most of the digital night vision or thermal devices out there on the market, whether it be Pulsar or not. It's just some of the cheaper Chinese devices aren't going to have as much range of adjustment because they don't have as good of quality of display in them. So you might see a 0 to 5 in some of those versus a 0 to 20, but conceptually um, what I'm going to show you here will be very similar. I'm also going to go over the mode algorithms that they have in those devices. So like in the Pulsars previously we had uh, rocks, trees, and the identification or ID mode, and then now we have normal, high, and ultra, but I'll be showing you kind of what they, they do to span the gradient differently. So let's jump out there in the field. We'll get a device set up and I'll show you how that works. I'll be right back with you. Okay folks, we're going to take a look I've got a few deer out there, so we got something to look at as I'm explaining this. Hopefully they'll bear with us. I'm starting to get a little bit spooky. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to go in and show you how this brightness and contrast works. So to get into the brightness and contrast, we're going to short press on the side encoder button. Uh, sh one single short press to bring that quick menu up and then additional short presses to toggle between the items. So effectively this is our brightness icon and this is our contrast and these are the associated mode algorithms. So in, this, in the mode algorithms you have uh, normal, high, and ultra in the newer pro devices and the older devices uh, effectively I think Normal is kind of most similar to the rocks mode, uh, high is most similar to trees mode, and ultra is most similar to the, what they called the ID mode previously. So effectively, let's start with brightness and contrast. So brightness is adjusting the, the backlighting brightness of the LED. So essentially it's just adding or subtracting brightness throughout the entire image. So your whitest objects are, you know, they can't get any whiter than white, but as you add brightness, you can certainly add a lighting effect and start to wash some of the darker objects out. Whereas contrast is essentially adjusting the, diff the span between black and white that's making up that gradient. So, you know, as we're rich in the contrast up, we're, we're scrunching those together. And as we scrunch those together, you know, we start to crunch the black and the white to where we start to lose information if we get the contrast too rich. And if we get it too lean, then we start to wash out as well. So the trick is finding the balance between those. And essentially what's going to determine that is, is the ambient condition that you're in. So in a brighter ambient condition, you know, in other words, you have brighter sunlight out there around the device, you're going to need to run that brightness a bit higher. And when you do run the brightness higher, you're going to need to adjust contrast to what your eye likes in a given scenario to match that. So like in this particular case right there, I'm at 10 brightness, 7 contrast, so I'm 7 below my brightness with my contrast. So if it was a really dark condition and I was in this same location and nothing had really changed, I might run the brightness down to, to you know, in this particular case, might run that brightness down to three and might run my contrast down to zero to get the same effect. But while getting the same effect, I get a much, much dimmer screen. So I get a lot less ambient light coming into my eye. So, you know, you can see the obvious benefit of that. The mode algorithms are essentially adjusting the weighting between the, the, the gradient span. So in other words, when you're in the normal mode, what I would anticipate they're doing is, you know, if your hottest object will give it a value of 100 and your coldest object a value of zero, in normal mode, they're giving, you know, like they're, they're assigning the colors evenly across that span. When you go to the high mode and the ultra, what they start to do I'll come down into this shadow here and, and focus it, and I think you'll see better effect on that. You know, what they're doing essentially is they're, they're starting to scrunch those gradients up. So like in this ultra mode, 
versus the normal mode, let's say they're taking the top 20% of blacks and the, and the, you know, the top 20% of whites in white hot and the bottom 20% of blacks in black hot, or excuse me, in, in the black color range, and they're just assigning them them all black or white and then adjusting the span in between so that you get a little bit more rich color at, at the ends of the spectra and a, and a little less transition through the middle so you get a little bit more richness and you say well where would that be beneficial in the case of ultra typically most beneficial if you're looking at something way out there up against a tree line and you don't need to see a lot of body side detail and you just want to see a, a good rich silhouette that's unbroken against the background then by riching the two ends of the spectra up a little bit you'll get a little bit less broken silhouette and you know you'll get clearer identifications because that silhouette is smoother and easier to see whereas the normal mode say you're only 40 or 50 yards away from something and you want really good rich clear detail well then by running the normal mode and getting adjustment the contrast and brightness adjusted properly you can start to get some really really good detail inside of the image so you know that would be a benefit of that one other thing that i want to show you here is in the in the mode settings when i'm making those adjustments see so here i'm in ultra mode if i come over here and let's just say for whatever reason i want to really rich this brightness up now if i come back in you know it'll stay there as long as i don't change those modes but if i go in here and i change those modes to let's say normal and i come back to ultra you can see where it went back to the default setting of nine on brightness and seven on contrast in that mode and so that could be really handy if you don't understand how these work and you just want to kind of you know scroll through the three modes and see what effect it has on your image then sometimes you know if you don't understand how this works then that could be a better way to make adjustments uh, but if you understand how it works and you want to be able to to keep your own settings then if you do a long press on the menu button come down here into this user mode and turn that on what you'll have the ability to do is now when i go in so you can see again there where i'm on ultra i'm going to jack this up to 20 just to show you how it works now if i come back in and I, let's say that i went over to a different mode to see how that looked just to make sure versus my setting and i wanted to go right back to where i had it now i have you can see where i'm back at that 20 on ultra so i have independent control over each one of these uh, high high medium or excuse me normal high and ultra um, over the contrast and brightness settings for each one but you know again main thing here i guess the main takeaway would be what i would recommend if you have any problem with this at all start with your start with your brightness at a mid-range you know and or if you're in the you know, if you're in bright sunlight obviously you might just have to jack it all the way up and then adjust contrast to get the image where you need it to be just be aware that if you get one too high and you need the other one below it so, so say for example you get your brightness uh you know all the way up to 20 and you need to go higher with contrast you're, you're kind of setting the ceiling at that 20 so so try not to go all the way to the maximum of the range in case when you're trying to view things you know you need to you need some of that scale left same way where that actually become more apparent is on the bottom at night you know you're tempted to just run your brightness all the way down to zero and then if you need your contrast to be a few numbers underneath of your brightness essentially you've already set the floor and you can't get below that so you might actually have to bring that brightness up a little bit once you bottom out on contrast to get the balance that you're looking for because that's essentially what you're looking for more than anything is just a balance there that your eye likes and that becomes kind of the issue with why there aren't really any magic numbers because each one of our eyes uh, is able to you know to adjust to that brightness differently and so it truly is one of them things where individually different people are going to have different preferences 
in certain scenarios but i hope that makes uh you know makes some sense to you makes this a little less confusing if you have any questions just be aware that you can call me anytime toll free 877-806-2977 or you can check any of these devices out obviously we have them all for sale on our website www.foxoptic.com thanks for watching and have a great day